Hey guys, how good? In today's video, I'm going to give you some tips to improve your model skills in 3ds Max. Let's explore some tools in Edit Poly Panel. And I'm also going to talk a little about the shortcuts that I use the most here. Well, let's get started. I have set inside the reference here. First, I'm going to add a plan. Let's make it the same size. I'm going to center it here in your skin. As you can see, the shortcut I use are showing on the left side, so this will make it easy for you to understand. I've already loaded some reference here, where I did some prior plan of the models mesh just to make the video easy to teach. Well, here I will add our reference to the plan. What we are going to do first is bring this reference a little further back and position it correctly in your skin. Here, as you can see, we have some shortcuts K that already have used it here, such as G, which enable or disables the grid in your skin. Let's create a plan to start the modeling this object. I will create it right here in this part. Okay, now what we need to do this is convert it to editable poly. My shortcut for using this tool is Ctrl T. I always use it in videos. With Ctrl T, we convert any object to editable poly. Another shortcut that I use a lot is Alt X. It's enabled the transparency of the object. Here, we we'll see that the object has become transparent, and with Alt X, we enable and disable this option. I'm going to position it correctly. Changing to the Add Mode to extrude the shape. Hold down Shift K, just click and drag it will be extrude this line. Let's do the same here at the bottom. To select more than one line, hold down Ctrl and it will be select multiple lines. Again, we hold down Shift K and we are going to extrude downwards. I'm going to position this line here to the side. Now, let's use another of my shortcuts, which will be Alt C. These shortcuts enable the cut tool from the Edit Poly panel, and it uses it to insert lines into your shape. Here, we'll continue our modeling. I'm going to extrude again to the sides, a little further down. Here, to align this edge on the x-axis, you can use scale. Just click on the axis and put it to the size. So, you align the edge or you can use the alignment option here in Edit Geometry Panel that are here next to the Make Planner. Just click on the X and it will be aligning your edge on the X-axis. Let's position it better here and extrude it all the way to the ends. Another one of my shortcuts that I use a lot during my videos is the Alt 1K. This shortcut, we can insert a new loop in different places in the model. So I'm going to insert a line here, a new loop, and again, we are going to extrude downwards. Let's position it here, down here, one more extrude here. To close this face, I use the bridge tool, that is located here in Edit Edge panel. Just select a line. Select the line on the opposite sides and press the bridge tool. My shortcut to use this tool is set to the Ctrl BK, and this way we enable the bridge panel here. Let's click OK. I will continue here now onto the ends and will position the line correctly. Here again I use Alt 1 to insert these two new lines. Let's extrude here to the sides, and now we will create this outline here around the part. This is because this part here already has a sliced inward curvature, 
so we can create this curvature to maintain the flow in the correct way. Let's extrude upwards. I will create another extrude here on the sides. And now we have some vertices that are loose, right? To join these vertices with this other one here in the Edit Geometry panel, we have the Collapse option. It will join two vertices and a point central to them. It will take an average of the distance from one to the other one and join them at this point. I will press Ctrl Z here. We have another way to join these two vertices using the vertex weld. In this case, we we'll should be click here on this box and open this distance option and we will increase it until it reach the distance that will join the vertices at the central points, right? If you press OK, it will weld the points. Ctrl Z again, we also have another option to do this. It will be the target weld. With this option, it will join the vertices that you click on the first to the next vertices. With the others, it will be joined by talking a central verge between the two distances and with this you will select the vertices that you want to weld to the other vertices. My shortcut for target weld is Ctrl Shift W which I always use in the videos as well. Here it works correctly. I will do the same here and here. To close this triangle let's go here in add mode I will select the edge and I use the cap tool, which is used precisely for this to close the holes in the shape. We no longer need these edges to remove the edge. Here we have the option to remove it or by holding down Ctrl and pressing backspace. It will remove this line. I will also position it correctly. I will complete it here. Now that we know the tools, just so the video is not too long, use target weld here and position the vertices. Now we have almost this entire piece created. I will create an extrude here up to the edge. Position it here correctly and this vertex too. This line should go a little inward since there is a slight curvature in this part of the model. I will bring it to the sides in this position and now I will insert a new loop here with Alt1. Note that Alt1 insert a loop maintaining the main shape. If you want this new inserted loop to follow the flow of the shape, that is creating a slash curvature according to the model that was created. I will press Ctrl Z here to remove the lines. I will press Alt 1 again to insert the lines. And now holding down Shift K, we can see that it stay locked regardless of the position we take our mouse to. The line is being created in the same place because it will create the line following the flow of the shape. I will click. You can see that it has already created the line and created a slightest curvature which is what we want here in this piece. You can also do this with another tool. You can insert a normal loop and press the set flow tool. The shortcut is Alt 2. This will create the slightest curvature in your shape, right? Another way to insert the lines here in your model is by using the Add Connect. I'm going to create an extrude here to the side just to demonstrate how this tool works. Here we are going to select two adds and press Ctrl C K, which is my shortcut for the Add Connect. It's also available here in the Edit Add panel. Here we have the Connect panel. Just click here on the sides and it enables the same function. And we can also position the adds along your shape. I'm going to press Ctrl C and insert two adds and position it correctly with the shape. Well, let's adjust these adds by pressing Alt 2, which is the set flow. This one isn't necessary. Here. 
we use breeds to close the shape. When we have a shape where the model is closed on both sides, we are going to use the Add mode to select everything. We will return to the Add mode, we will deselect the two ads at the ends and press Ctrl B. And Breed will close the entire shape at once. Here, we have to adjust some ads which is very simple. Using the set flow, the command out to it will position the ads correctly. Ok, now let's just adjust the position and that's it. We have this piece already created. I'm going to create the stop here. Adjust it here and it should be go there. Then, holding down Shift K, we extrude it and that's it. This first piece of this model has already been created. Now, what you need to do is add a symmetry on the Z axis. We add a new edge poly, and here we will select the edge and use the bridge tool to close the gaps. I'm going to disable the see through here. Let's do the same here. By holding down Ctrl, you can select the multiple ads. We all need a loop here in the middle. I also use the shortcut for the ring tool a lot. Mine is Ctrl R. It selects all the ads and Ctrl C to insert a new ad. I'm also going to insert a new one down here. Selects everything, selects the ads and Ctrl B to close the gaps. Let's do the same here. So you can isolate the model in the skin, the shortcut is Alt key. So you can isolate only the shape you are working on in your 3ds Max skin. Let's do the same here to finish the shape of yours. And that's it. Here you have the finished shape. Let's not see now that it has a sliced curvature here on the edge. So let's pay attention to that and create this sliced chamfer here, right? Let's use the chamfer tool that is in your edit poly panel. You can click here and enable the chamfer. I use my shortcut, which is Ctrl Shift C, and it's enable the chamfer in the Add Poly panel. Here, I'm going to reduce it to zero, and here we adjust the thickness of this chamfer on this edge. I believe that it's enough. What I'm going to do now is apply another chamfer to the new edge. We'll select all the edges of the models again. Press Ctrl Shift C and now we are going to reduce its size here and I'm going to add a value of 1 to add a 1 loop. Let's make it really sharp. Now we insert the open subdivision modifier and you will see that its shape is working correctly. I believe that here above we can have a loop to hold in this shape here. So, I'm going to insert a new loop, press Ctrl R for ring and Ctrl C to insert a new loop on the both sides. There you go! Now, we have the shape working a little better. I'm going to return here to our reference and this way we have the first piece created for this model, right? Now, let's talk about a script that I use a lot, which is the loop regularizer. You can transform face into a perfect cylinder. I will leave the open subdivide value at 1 and add a new edit poly. 
Let's go to the other side of this piece and isolate the selection here. Let's go to the face mode. I will select some face. Here, I believe that this is enough. My shortcut key to use this script is Ctrl Shift R. We can see that it transforming this face into a perfect circle. Now, with the scale modes, we will scale by holding down shift. It will create a new loop. And again, by holding down shift, we will extrude inward and create your hole in the piece. We use Alt 1 to insert support loops and open subdivide modifier again. In that way, we create a perfect circle in your shape. I use it a lot in the videos, and you always ask me what the shortcut is and how it works. The download link for this loop regularizer script will be in the video description. Just download it and drag it into your 3ds Max. Go here to the Customize tab. In the Hotkey Editor tab, search for Regularizer Add Loop, select it, and here in Hotkeys, Enter the shortcut you want to add to this script. In my case, it's Ctrl Shift R and press and assign. Finally, click done and it will be configured. Well, by following this modeling method, you can create any models here in 3ds Max. It's very simple. We already have made this model. So I'm going to open here so you can just take a look at how it's turned out. Here, we have the model created by following only the steps, using the tools and shortcuts. Here, we have the complete model. As you can see, it actually has a hole on the other side. Here, I'm going to maximize the viewport using the Ctrl Alt X. And here, you see the model working correctly, just using the main tools in 3ds Max, right? As you can see, the mesh is sliced in all the other shapes, except for the logo part of the object. But I also have a backup of this piece in low poly, it will be this one. Here, we will see that its shape is exactly like the one we created. Very light, very simple. If you remove or modify here, we see that the shape is exactly the way we did at the beginning of the video. Ok everyone, that was today's video. If you have any question, leave them in the comments and subscribe, I will be here. See you later, bye!